We are so glad to have the choir back. Thank you so much. Let's give them a round of applause. Yes. <laughs> Welcome also to those joining us online. Make sure you let us know of your presence this morning, and we are so glad that you are worshiping as well. I'd like you to take a moment, if you are at home, to light a candle nearby as a sign that we are all worshiping together in the light of Christ this morning. Will you please join me in our call to worship? Take delight in the Lord. For God will give us the desires of our hearts. Trust in the Lord. For God will give us security and strength. Come, let us commit our ways to the Lord. Let us worship the one who is our refuge in any time of trouble. Let's stand and sing together our opening hymn.
Good morning. We are the Fogarty's. Our scripture reading today is from Romans 3, verses 1 through 7. We who are powerful need to be patient with the weakness of those who don't have power and not please ourselves. Each of us should please our neighbors for their good in order to build them up. Christ didn't please himself, but, as it is written, the insults of those who insulted you fell on me. Whatever was written in the past was written for our instruction so that we could have hope through endurance and through the encouragement of the scriptures. May the God of endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude toward each other, <coughs> similar to Christ Jesus' attitude. That way you can glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ together with one voice. So welcome each other in the same way that Christ also welcomed you for God's glory. We, we are, are thankful, thankful for, for the, the gift of, of the scripture. scripture. Amen. Amen. Now I asked Bonnie this morning if our prayer buddies out there in the congregation would count toward our worship number for this morning. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I think they should. I feel like I'm preaching to them as well. She'll tell you a little bit more about our prayer buddies. Those online, we have stuffed animals all over the sanctuary this morning as our prayer buddies, so make sure to look around and, and uh, maybe give one a squeeze while you're sitting there. <laughs> well, I want to share with you that last week, after a series of evaluations and conversations with a lot of different professionals, that Xavier's dad and I learned that Xavier has some special behavioral challenges that we'll be dealing with over the next uh, few years as he is continuing in elementary school and uh, just, just being a kid, and so that's going to be an upcoming uh, challenge for some of us. And while that wasn't a, a, a complete surprise to me, it's still some hard news to process and to hear when you know that your child will have some challenges coming his way, and will have to overcome some. We'll have to, of course, learn about them and face them together, and it's always one step at a time, one day at a time, and one deep breath at a time. Now for Xavier and honestly for me as a parent, the biggest challenge has been how do we handle big feelings such as anger? When something doesn't go his way, Xavier will tend to, to act out or get very upset or even sometimes be aggressive toward those that he loves. I in turn struggle right along with Xavier to deal with what Mr. Rogers calls the mad you feel. Anybody else? The mad you feel. <laughs> Mr. Rogers in a song asks, what do you do with the mad that you feel? When you feel so mad you could bite. When the whole wide world seems oh so wrong and nothing you do seems right. Well, what <coughs> do we do? Let's take a look at more of what Mr. Rogers had to say. Someday a man. 
there will always be helpers. Anybody who is coming into a place where there's a tragedy, just on the sidelines, always look for the helpers. If you look for the helpers, you'll know that there's hope.
Because so often in our world right now, it is so easy to get mad and do nothing or simply to turn a blind eye to people who are hurting. We become so caught up in our own turmoil that we do not look around or acknowledge the pain of others. With everything I have going on, I'm just as guilty of that as anyone else. So it will take a shift in all of our perspectives for each one of us to go from our identities as victims to our identities as helpers, especially in times of chaos and division and confusion. So Paul, in his letter to the Romans that we heard this morning, he is pleading for some perspective <coughs> among the church members, especially among those who come from different backgrounds. He pleads with them to set aside their differences, particularly around food, what they eat, how they eat it, and how they observe particular holy days. Churches in Rome were made up of two different groups. You had the Jewish people who were learning about Christianity and what it meant to be a follower of Jesus, and then you had the non-Jewish people or the Gentiles. The Gentiles still wanted to hold on to their practice of sacrificing food to pagan idols. On the other hand, the Jews were still holding on to their food practices of not eating certain types of food, such as shellfish or pork. And as a former Jew, I still cannot eat pork, just so you know. I just can't, can't do it. But each group felt like these foods were a betrayal of their faith in God. Understandably so. So the unity of the church in Rome was being threatened by these divisions. So Paul gently nudges them toward a compromise, urging sensitivity on all sides, and asking those who feel like they are able to, to abstain from eating certain foods or doing their certain practices. And they would do this as an example of sacrifice for the good of the whole. At the end of the day, Paul says, we must build one another up and not get so caught up in these petty little legalistic rules and details that we cannot see at the bigger picture. We cannot let such legalistic matters get in the way of the love that we have for each other and that we have in Christ Jesus. So Paul is telling us today, friends, don't divide the church over the color of the carpet, okay? Just don't do it. Keep the main thing the main thing. So with Christ at the center of all that we do, love is the goal. Love is what matters. Helping our neighbors see and understand that this truth goes beyond any petty misunderstandings or agreements that we might have. And just as Mr. Rogers was hesitant to put himself forward and to make those statements regarding something as tragic as 9-11, we too may feel ill-prepared or hesitant to put ourselves out there as leaders or helpers. We feel that we don't have the words or the actions to make a difference, or that we feel we're just not smart enough or not good enough or we're not equipped for the task. There's just too much fear and division in the world, we might say. But each one of us can do something. Each one of us can do small things with great love, as Mother Teresa said. Even when our lives seem to be falling apart, we can keep our eyes open to the helpers and in turn be helpers ourselves. A few weeks ago, when I was asked to be a guest preacher at Clay Church in South Bend, I had the privilege of hearing a young woman named Amanda share her testimony with the congregation that morning. It was about her son, Jasper, and his challenges. That from the time he was a baby, he suffered from times when he could not breathe, especially when he was sleeping. He would just stop breathing. And they didn't understand why this kept happening. Nobody could figure it out. So after what seemed like thousands of trips to the emergency room and countless doctors and tests, a specialist finally realized that Jasper suffers from a very rare blood disorder that has the capability to shut down his organs and cause life-threatening results. He's now on treatments and is a very happy and active 10-year-old, <coughs> but he will still need treatment and possibly organ transplants as he ages through the rest of his life. So as Amanda told her story, my heart went out to her. 
I'm thankful that my son does not have a life-threatening illness, but I definitely identified with her frustration and her anger and her heartbreak over her challenges as a mother to a child with special needs and challenges all of his own. Her faith suffered as a result of everything that happened with Jasper. She was angry at God. She felt abandoned and hopeless. But one day, a minister who was new to the neighborhood stopped by her home and introduced himself. He had heard about the family's struggles and just wanted to offer a listening ear and maybe an invitation to join the new church that he was starting. She was reluctant at first, but invited him into her home. And she now marks this as a life-changing moment for her, where she identified this pastor as a helper, someone who helped Amanda bring herself and her family back to faith in Christ, someone who offered hope in the midst of hopelessness, someone who offered that light while they were in a time of extreme darkness. So after a few years and things had settled a bit, she wanted to pay it forward. So she, she recently offered to help the Afghan refugees who had made their way to South Bend. Her army background served her well with her knowledge of the culture and the language, having served in Afghanistan. So one afternoon as she was helping an Afghan family unload groceries into their house, they invited her to stay for dinner. Now, since the group was all men, she knew that this was almost unheard of for such an invitation to extend this to a woman, especially since she was not a spouse or a relative. But they invited her in. They made her feel like she was the guest of honor. She FaceTimed with their family members. She learned about them. They prayed together. They laughed. They learned. So by being a helper, Amanda was then thankful for the dark time in her life when she was helped. Amanda was able to become a helper because of her hope and inspiration. She is now making a difference in the lives of others. Or take this brave group of people for an example. This picture was taken in Golders Green, North London several years ago. It shows the amazing compassion of these random people who came to the rescue of this man who was threatening to jump from a bridge. It started with just one person, then two, then three, and so on. They refused to let him go. Some even tied ropes around his torso and his feet to secure his body and prevent him from jumping. It was an impromptu demonstration of human compassion and it lasted for over two hours before emergency crews arrived and led the man to safety. Wow. We can do amazing things, each one of us, if only we are willing to keep our eyes open to the helpers and even become the helpers ourselves. As Paul in his letter to the Romans encourages us to build one another up, and keep unity at the center of all we do, not letting divisions and pettiness and legalistic rules trip us up. If we can focus our eyes and our hearts on Christ Jesus, we can come together to show the world what human compassion looks like. And Lord willing, it is contagious. May it be so. was started in 1981 by a dear friend named Lisa Wongsness, Pam Moore, and myself. We have been blessed by the greatest support of this church, by the best volunteers in the world. I've had great leadership, awesome help. The toughest thing that we've been through was learning to Zoom. Zooming was really hard for us. Some were able to do it, some just could never understand. The volunteers were on there loyally, just volunteering their time and 
laughing and trying to make people just smile because the world was pretty sad for a while. It is a very special night for me because the United Methodist Women give awards to groups of people who are doing marvelous, marvelous things. And this year, and I have the certificate that was presented to the Sunshine Friends Volunteers. And I'm going to include all of that, all the guests, because I think the guests are just as important as the volunteers. We um, are just blessed to have the freedom to have these parties and bring joy to the hearts of our special needs community and the hearts of the volunteers that share their time. I just want to thank the church and all the volunteers that are involved. Good morning. And good morning to all of you that have joined us online. Welcome. We have a few announcements to share with you today. There are uh, Noblesville First Kids team meeting today at 11 o'clock in the by rooms. This is a great opportunity for those who want to get involved and interested in serving our kids. You can stop by and see Allie Hall and have all of your questions answered. It's just downstairs in the elevator to your right. You can't miss it. It's the by rooms, 11 o'clock. We're also marking the 40-day journey toward Easter on Ash Wednesday. March 2nd with a Lenten breakfast at 9.30 in the morning at Celebration Hall. There's no charge to attend, but we do ask for reservations. We ask that you sign up either online or in the church office or at noblesvillefirst.com. And we ask either a $5 McDonald's gift card for our college students or for some Easter basket candy for the kids uh, at the United Methodist Children's Home in Lebanon, Indiana. Also, if you're in the market for Easter baskets, I understand there will be handmade baskets themed for sale that day as well, too, created by the United Methodist Women. And if Ash Wednesday and Lent are new to you, please attend our Whitcomb Chapel right across the hallway here to learn about Lent with Pastor Jill herself and all of our confirmation students that will also be attending. And that will be immediately followed in here in the sanctuary for Wednesday worship for Ash Wednesday worship here at 7 p.m. for music, for prayer, a meditation by Pastor Jerry, and also imposition of ashes. I know there have been a lot of questions about the ashes this year. Yes, they will be occurring. Today is the last day to contribute to the 200 envelope fundraiser. You can pick up an envelope from the display here or down by Celebration Hall, and the number on the outside of the envelope is what we ask that you consider to contribute. This will, these funds will also help for the improvements to the vine, uh, for our student center, and also retreat coming up in July, and also in the fall, and also the children's ministries, including outreach events at Teeter Organic Farm. And speaking of Teeter Organic Farm, we've opened for seating already, and we are looking for volunteers Mondays and Tuesdays from 6 to 8 p.m., and also Thursdays from 9 to 11. You can find more details at teeterorganicfarm.com. We invite you to visit noblesvillefirst.com and click on the next steps as well to uh, register your attendance and give online and request prayers. I also ask that you um, fill out a connection card. I think yours may be a different color than mine. We had a little bit of mix up, not to worry. All connection cards count. We ask that you put your name on this and put it in the offering plate as they come around soon. All right, and again, if you are visiting for the first time today, we uh, either in person or online, we ask that you connect with Pam Kaplinger, who is with us here today as well. She'll be out in the hall after worship, but you can also reach her at her email address, pkaplinger at noblesvillefirst.com. And as we enter into our offering time, please note that you can share your financial gifts in their offering plate or by mail or by noblesvillefirst.com are also on the Noblesville First app. Let's pray together over the offerings today. Most gracious Father, 
We pray that we become as gracious to others, to our church, and to this world as you have always been generous and gracious to us. Bless all of our offerings today and every day. Then multiply them to where they do the most good in this world and always for your glory. Amen. Lakeville 
Indiana area. Our condolences to the Mangus family. We also understand that there was a 16-year-old who lost his life in a car accident over the weekend. We have no other details, but we ask that you keep these families also in your prayers. Well, they did it now. The Noblesville Lady Miller's basketball team won semi-state, and they will play Franklin next year. They will play Franklin next week for the state championship game, so get ready, Noblesville. We are also celebrating our zoo full of prayer buddies this morning that are joining us here today, both here and in Celebration Hall. We had a great team of seven animal angels yesterday who gathered to tag all 210 animals. Please feel free to take any of the prayer buddies that you see without a red tag and share with someone who could use some cheering up today, even if it is yourself. The ones left behind will be donated to the hospice and memory care units of Allisonville Meadows and also to the paramedics and first responders of Noblesville First Fire Station 75 and the Noblesville Police Station on South 9th Street. Thank you to everyone who donated a prayer buddy, sharing the love and compassion of Jesus with others through this ongoing ministry. Prayer buddy donations are always welcome and accepted here at the church. And for those of you online, if you'd like to have a prayer buddy, Please go to care at noblesvillefirst.com, drop us an email and say, hey, Bonnie, send me a prayer buddy. We'll work with you on that. Please either give us your address or your telephone number so we can contact you. We also ask that you please share your prayer concerns with us at the website link to prayer requests or on your Noblesville First app on your phone where prayer request form is also available. And contact your pastoral care team for upcoming surgeries or any pastoral needs at care at noblesvillefirst.com or the 24-7 care line at 
please join us in a time of silent prayer and take to God what is on your heart today. And then I'll follow with a pastoral prayer before we say the Lord's Prayer together. Let's pray. Almighty God, thank you for this Sunday morning and for the time of gathering as part of your holy and universal church. You give us many gifts, Lord, more sometimes than what we realize, including the warmth within our hearts. Sometimes we forget to lift others up, to share unwavering compassion with others as you do with us. Forgive us for that, Jesus. Remind us to set aside what is always so important to ourselves that we cannot hear others from their point of view. Perhaps their view is not always wrong or bad. And when they hurt or falter and make a mistake, not to judge or to shame them, but to pull them up out of their storm and into your peace, calling them friend like you do. We can all do this through you, Father, by your power and for your glory. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for moving us in the right direction. And thank you for the prayer, Jesus, that you taught us long ago, that we say together now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, and thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever.
inward love guide every deed. By this we worship and are free. May you go in peace with the joy of knowing the love of Christ, opening our hearts and our eyes to the helpers, and maybe even being one yourself. Go in peace. Have a great week.